talk about your money. It's pop off politics Tuesday and today is the day that we tell you about how your politicians are continuing to spend your tax dollars. We're focusing on the city of Houston and no one knows city politics better than KPRC2 investigator Mario Diaz who joins me live in the studio. Welcome Mario. What are we taking a look at today? Good morning to you. It's not the biggest agenda that we've seen doing this segment, but I will tell you there is some serious money being spent this week. 177 pages is what makes up this week's Houston City Council agenda. And it's never good when somebody says serious money. So no. what exactly are we talking about? Well, we're talking about water and all the pipes that have broken that we've seen around the city. You know, our station has reported on it numerous times over the years. And just last week, our cameras caught geysers in the Heights in West Houston. And Haley, as we know, this is mostly due, like major U.S. cities that we've known for quite some time, to an aging infrastructure. Yeah, and the city has been talking about fixing these pipelines and what but we are the fourth largest city in the country. What's taking so long? This isn't going to just happen overnight. It's not it's not going anywhere anytime soon. You're absolutely right, Haley. And it's why Public Work is calling on the city council to approve nearly 48 million dollars in emergency repairs. And that's just to get a handle on all the water leaks. Now, Public Works will tell you there's the agenda item right there. It's agenda items 17 through 27 this week. And Public Works will tell you we are experiencing a high volume of water line breaks due to drought conditions. Carol Haddock and her team will also tell you that these breaks are at lower levels in prior years. While this that is in the eye of the beholder, she says Houston water would not be able to complete the necessary repairs to maintain the water distribution system. I in that's in the eye of the beholder. What do you mean by that? Is it not really at lower levels than previous years? Well, what we did is that we took a look at the city's 311 data for the last month. Our ACE producer on this, Jason Wynn, did this for me. Thank you so much, Jason, this week. We found 5,660 water leaks that were called in and 3,112 calls for service to fix them. Now, we had TJ Parker report recently. That is double the amount that we had at this time last year. We're talking about $48 million. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And it can't all be going to one contractor. So no, no, no. The way they're doing is they're splitting this up. Okay. There are 11 companies that they've enlisted to basically pull us out of this current mess. But I will tell you, they've been doing this for quite some time. Okay. The city council vote is tomorrow. These are the 11 companies that the city council will use to help get us back on track because we've seen emergency. We've seen emergency agenda items concerning water mains now for quite some time, and their contracts for this week range from $3 million to more than $11 million. The average is right around $4.3 million. And I do have to tell you that one of these companies started working in the city uh, back in April. So um, eight others have just started in August. So they're starting to pick some new vendors here to help get them addressed. I mean, they've known that this was a problem for quite some time, and now it seems like they're doing a lot of work to fix it now, this age-old problem. Yeah, uh, Council Member Abby Kamen tells us that she plans to bring this back up to City Council, and she's looking for other ways to get the city back on track when it comes to our aging and our issues that we have with our water infrastructure. You have to keep in mind that the city and the previous administrations have been talking about this problem for years. It's not as if all of a sudden, oh, oh, we're walking up on a problem. We got a problem all of a sudden. No, they've known about this problem for some time. They just didn't stumble upon it. It just hasn't been addressed. And now they're trying to figure out, now they're calling this all emergencies, right? These are all emergency issues. Well, guess what happens when it's an emergency? It doesn't go out for bid. So they just select the vendors and they just go boom and they just start voting on it. Usually what happens is, you know, we have a problem. Hey, we need to get a contract for this. So let's get some bids in for this. And you start an RFP process. But because it's an emergency action, they just throw vendors out there. So you have to find out who are these vendors? What's their history? In fact, we have questions on one. We're still waiting from the public, wa uh, public works to get back to us with answers. So that's the problem here. And a lot of people will tell you that I've spoken with at City Hall, insiders, will say, this is nothing new. It's just a matter of just kicking the can down the road and waiting to 
address the issue. Yeah, and now we're potentially paying a lot more. Oh, right, to and that's the, the whole point, right? You know, it's like, do we put a band aid on a problem or do yeah. we address the problem? Right. right. You want to be able to address the problem right away and say, hey, let's get this really addressed so we don't put the burden on our residents. They don't have to pay more to get this stuff done. Yeah. So, hey, I got to tell you, check out the new graphics this week. Have you seen yeah. these graphics? I, I Anthony, saw have you seen the graphics? The new graphics we have. It's a little bit of Milwaukee Brewers color, <laughs> but it's nice. Just for no, pop-up That's politics. right. No, Roman City Council. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but uh, I want to thank Jason Wynn. He's our producer for he this. He crunched some numbers. Yeah, this he week, crunched some tell. numbers. He worked. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm dealing with the allergies, so this was mm -hmm. this was his his week. But he did the graphics along with the rest of our team, and I got to say. I'm rocking this. I like this. Yeah, Andy joined us earlier and earlier in the show to talk about the evidence room. So he's a busy guy. Yes, he is. And you are too, Mario. Thanks as always for being All right. here this I think, morning. I hope I'm I hope I made sense. You made great sense. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, and if you have questions about it, you can always email Mario to talk to him more. Or if you have a question about an agenda item, just send him an email at mds at kprc. I always answer the emails especially when it comes from viewers who have concerns about agenda items, about how their money's being sent, what the problem is in their community involving officials. That's what we do. That's what we have done. And that's what so we're out there. That's what drives us. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Awesome, Mario. Thanks again for joining us this morning. Every Tuesday morning, pop off politics right here on KPSC 2 Plus.